The United States and Mexico are in a presidential election year with their shared border as center stage. The approaching one-year anniversary of a fire at a temporary migrant detention facility in Ciudad Juarez, the worst one on record at a government-run migration agency, is a reminder of the deadly consequences of immigration politics. Despite the shocking death toll, questions remain over what really happened. U.S. efforts to deter migration puts pressure on Mexico to detain more people. Border cities like Ciudad Juarez have turned from transit points to containment areas for asylum seekers. On the morning of March 27, 2023, Mexican authorities fanned out across the city apprehending migrants. Many of those picked up were washing car windows or selling candy to get by while waiting to apply for asylum in the U.S. Joel Alexander Leal Peña from Venezuela was one of them. Three days short of his 21st birthday, he was detained and transferred to a temporary migrant holding facility just meters from the international border. Before the day was over, he would leave the center in a body bag, one of 40 people who died trapped in a locked cell, suffocated to death in the smoke. Blame for the death toll has centered on keys at the facility. Mexico's president said the employee with the key to the men's cell was away when the fire broke out. Staff at the center claimed they didn't know where the keys were to open the doors. Este, se produce un incendio, pero sobre todo hay intoxicación. Porque la puerta estaba cerrada, porque quien tenía eh, la llave no estaba. Lighthouse reports worked with La Verdad in Ciudad Juarez and Texas El Paso Matters to interview survivors, first responders, and officials in both countries and examine 16 hours of CCTV footage, thousands of pages of documents as well as previously unheard audio. This investigation revealed for the first time what staff were doing in the critical minutes as Joel Alexander and 39 others were dying. contradicts the official narrative and provides some answers to families of the victims and the 27 survivors about the night of the fire. To piece together how and why so many people died, we built a 3D model of the center to examine the crucial minutes before, during, and after the fire. What emerges raises serious questions about the continuing expansion of migrant detention in Mexico with U.S. support. Mexico has a sprawling network of permanent and temporary migrant detention facilities run by the country's National Migration Institute, or INM. Since 2018, fires have broken out in at least eight facilities, including a 2019 fire in the same Ciudad Juarez Center where detainees burned their sleeping mats. In early 2023, frustrations mounted as the U.S. increased expulsions of asylum seekers Mexican authorities vowed to crack down on the growing migrant population. The day of the fire, city police, INM agents, and the Mexican National Guard roamed the city rounding up asylum seekers. Detained groups were transported in mass to the migrant holding center. The day of my de mi, de mi detention, no me dicen nada, no me leen ningún artículo, no hay ningún tipo de, 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 de respuesta a, por el cual fue detenido. No me dicen nada, solamente ingresa, me quitan todas mis pertenencias, mi teléfono, mi cartera, mi cédula de identidad venezolana, me quitan todo y, y me, me tienen ahí un buen rato y me, me revisan nuevamente y ahí sí ya entro ya a la, a la estancia. As more people arrived, conditions within the men's cell, according to survivors, rapidly deteriorated with not enough food or water. We analyzed footage from 15 fixed cameras in key areas of the building, the entrance, the administrative office, the guards area in front of the men's cell and the cell itself, Two cameras inside the cell only had a partial feed cutting out before the start of the fire. 
We discovered recorded audio from two surveillance cameras near the main entrance of the center, giving vital clues as to what happened the night of the fire. On duty that night were federal INM agents and guards from a private security company called CAMSA, charged with looking after the detainees. Throughout the day, INM agents and private security staff opened and closed the men's cell door with a specific set of keys. Next to the cell, staff used a separate set of keys on a wooden door and metal gate that exits to a parking lot. Arguments erupted between detainees and staff over the lack of food, potable water, and threats of deportation. Mayormente había un, había, había un insulto en donde nos decían que qué hacemos en este país, que nadie nos quiere. Close to 9 p.m., the INM agent supervising the men's area left the building and a private security employee dead bolted the wooden door. Then she handed the keys to an INM colleague in the administrative office. Later, we see a guard hand the key to the men's cell door to his colleague. Meanwhile, tempers continue to build within the men's cell. Detainees kicked at the cell door and threatened to light their sleeping mats on fire. I remember that a migrant grita que si no los querían, si no les iban a dejar salir, este iban a encender. Y viene el guardia de migración. Les dice que de hace rato lo hubieran hecho. Cuando veo que comienzan a poner las colchonetas, me comencé a poner nervioso, me entró un miedo de que qué iba a pasar, ¿no? At 9:28 p.m., we see the key for the men's cell door for the last time hanging from the pocket of a private security employee. Seconds later, the first flames of the fire are visible in surveillance footage. Cuando veo de que encienden la colchoneta, que pues eso fue, fue muy rápido, ¿no? Esas, las colchonetas bueno, fueron encendiendo más rápido, le iban tirando más. Los de inmigración no, no hicieron nada, pues, vi que solo salieron. Entonces ya un cinco minutos de que todo se ve bien se había encendido el humo ya no dejaba ni ver eh, cuando yo quise como refugiarme al baño no pude ni entrar porque ahí estaban todos los todos los que estaban ahí inmigrantes the vinyl sleeping mats ignited at the front of the cell and the toxic smoke quickly filled the room as the smoke engulfed the cell guards were slow to react no one opened the cell door or the exterior door to let the smoke out as the fire burned, dozens of men rushed to the adjoining bathrooms, the furthest point from the burning mats. Many of the fire extinguishers in the center were either missing or didn't work. Two minutes after the fire started, an INM officer left to search for an extinguisher. A sign designated the nearest location just 10 meters away, but there was no canister present. One extinguisher is seen there, but the officer passes it by. Further in the building, another designated location is also missing its extinguisher. In this audio, staff discuss the lack of extinguishers.
By the time he returned to the men's cell, nearly three minutes had passed since the start of the fire. If there had been an extinguisher at the nearest designated location, it could have been retrieved in less than 16 seconds. Prior to searching for a fire extinguisher, the same INM agent tried to open the wooden exterior door, but the door was locked. The key to this door was left in the administrative office by a guard earlier in the evening. Audio recorded from a nearby camera captures an INM agent talking on the phone. She remarks that they will not open certain doors. <laughs> After the INM agent in charge said that they will not open certain doors, a decision was made to release 15 women detained in another cell. Finally, the key to the exterior door was retrieved from the desk by one of the private security guards. During the next 15 minutes, the keys were handed over to a private security supervisor, an INM supervisor, then two National Guard agents, and then back into the hands of staff, but none of them unlocked the wooden exterior door. Josie. La angustiado gritaba ayuda, pedía ayuda que abrieran o que hicieran algo, ¿no? Porque recuerdo en los de migración en ningún momento hicieron por querer abrir la, la puerta. Los dejaron encerrados. Blocked exits turned the men's cell into a death trap. Thirteen minutes after the fire started, firefighters began to arrive at the center and found the exterior door locked. 13 minutes later, CCTV footage showed outlines of their flashlights as they advanced through the darkness. The keys never left the premises, yet firefighters were forced to break the door's closure. It took firefighters nine additional minutes to extract the first victim. Firefighters also discovered two of the cell's three exits had been permanently sealed, one covered completely with a new wall. A live stream from a local journalist showed firefighters removing the door to the sealed entrance by its hinges. Using sledgehammers, they broke through the wall to ventilate smoke and extract victims. But for 40 people, it was too late. Blocked exits and locked doors doomed the 67 people abandoned in the cell while staff had access to the keys that could have freed them. It remains unclear who decided to leave them trapped or who decided beforehand to seal the exits and not replace missing fire extinguishers. Me siento algo molesto para decirte, no. No me siento tan tranquilo por lo que pasó. Porque en gusto, en gusto va habiendo seguridad de migración y no los puedo no los puedo ayudar, va. Porque estando allí ellos si no los pudieron abrir el en la puerta para poder rescatarnos. Mejor se si ellos vieron que uno se quemara ahí. Si ellos hubieran abierto la puerta pues no hubiera no hubiera pasado nada. Survivors suffering from lung damage, amputations and other chronic health conditions have yet to receive justice. Families of the deceased buried their loved ones without adequate explanation about how they died. 11 people have been criminally charged for the tragedy, but no trial date has been set. 
Three days after the fire, Joel Alexander's friends gathered outside the burned-out facility to commemorate his 21st birthday. His odyssey to find work in the U.S. and support his family cost him his life. Feliz, muy feliz. Que seamos todos en esta reunión. Tus amistades llegamos.